People like games. What's up, folks? It's Reggie with People Like Games. And this week, we've got a cult classic with massive amounts of history behind it. And with the release of the long awaited sequel coming out, I think today, let's get into story mode with Psychonauts. This story starts with an absolute legend named Tim Schafer. Tim started his career in gaming with world famous LucasArts Studios, where his first big break came on Ron Gilbert's The Secret of Monkey Island, the first in a series of lauded point and click adventures, many of which are still praised as some of the best games of all time. Even here, we can begin to see Tim's strengths in storytelling and comedy within his games to build out a memorable world. Tim would continue working on the Monkey Island series, but his portfolio includes just a few more games that we've got to mention. Next came Day of the Tentacle, Tim's first leading role. Yet another point and click, but once again, hailed for its comedy and aesthetics. However, it did see a big improvement on the sales front. Schaefer's first game as a project leader, though, would be the one to finally put his name on the map. Full Throttle released in 1995 and was expected to sell around 100,000 units. It ended up being the first game by LucasArts to break the million mark. Of all the games mentioned so far, Tim's next project probably holds the most cultural relevance today, and that's 1998's Grim Fandango. To be honest, all these games could get a story mode of their own, and let us know in the comments if you want those, by the way. But with that sitting here praising Tim's mastery of the point and click any further, we should get back to the topic at hand. On a quick note, I should mention that after Grim Fandango, LucasArts decided to move out of the point and click market, which prompted Tim to leave the studio, going on to start Double Fine Productions, where Psychonaut was born. Funny enough though, if you've played Psychonauts, you know that Tim would still move away from the point and click genre for his first big studio release anyway, looking to keep the depth of a graphic adventure now with the feel of a console game. The idea for Psychonauts actually came from a failed idea for Full Throttle. Schaefer imagined a sequence where the main character takes peyote and his adventure gets a little bit psychedelic. Definitely not family friendly enough for LucasArts of the 90s, Schaefer could finally revisit the idea with his own studio. LucasArts' last contribution to Psychonauts came through the name of the main character, Raz, which was borrowed from a nickname for Razmig Mavalon, who eventually ended up joining Double Fine to work on the game anyway. After developing Raz and the other characters in the game, Tim had a breakthrough approach in coming up with personalities for his characters. He imagined what they would act like and how they would see themselves on social media, as he was a big fan of Friendster at the time. Take a second to appreciate that genius though. Back in the early 2000s, no one really cared about your social media presence, but Tim Schafer was able to use his burgeoning technology to develop some of the most charming characters of the modern gaming era. Everything from dynamic NPC conversations broken down with coughs and other audio cues to reduce repetition, the camp and woods setting to promote the children's exploration, to the mental worlds explored throughout the game. All of this was meticulously planned to feed into each other, creating a sense of realism in an otherwise pretty fantastical world. So the concept is all there, and you've got a verifiable gaming genius with Tim Schafer running the ship. While it all sounds good on paper, it just doesn't run that smoothly for a brand new company. Internal strife, an office move, and Tim stretching himself just a bit too thin all contributed to the game being delayed multiple times over the years. There was even some strife with Microsoft, who was set to publish the game as an Xbox exclusive. After some back and forth, the game would eventually make its way to the console, but through Majesco Entertainment now. All of this stretched what would have been a two-year development cycle into almost five. Fast forward to 2005, though, and you guessed it, Psychonauts is yet another Tim Schafer hit with critics. Yet again, he nails it on the comedy, particularly telling as he co-wrote almost the entire game in dialogue with Eric Wolpaw. Another huge talking point was, of course, the ridiculous cast of characters that evolved throughout the story in a way most NPCs couldn't come close to, and were all truly standout characters. But you know I mentioned the critics first because sales were not looking hot. Only around 100,000 sold by the end of 2005. However, the team was able to pump up the numbers in 2011 when Majesco's publishing deal expired and Double Fine gained full rights to the game. From there, it was ported around the block, and by 2012, sales had reached 400,000. By 2015, when Psychonauts 2 was finally announced, 
that number was up to 1.7 million, most of which came after Double Fine acquired the rights for the game, selling more than 700,000 copies through Humble Bundle alone and another 400,000 on Steam. Over the years, Psychonauts has become the quintessential cult classic. Fantastic characters, a brilliant story, great humor. The game is just plain fun and accessible to just about anybody. As someone who never played it as a kid, I enjoy the hell out of this game today and cannot wait to get my hands on the sequel when it comes out. That's all for this week, folks. Let us know how you like Psychonauts 2 down in the comments. I'll be back next week with another story mode. Peace.